towards the end of autumn last year, Derek and I headed up to the Cairngorms National Park. Neither of us had visited the area before, but inspired by the book I read by Nan Shepherd, The Living Mountain, we wanted to see as much of it as possible in the few days we were there. After a seven hour drive, we arrived at our first location, Balmoral Castle. We were keen to stretch our legs. Crossing over the River Dee using Balmoral Bridge, we had our first sighting of a red squirrel, but it was in far too much of a hurry to hang around to be filmed. Balmoral Castle has been the Scottish home of the royal family since it was purchased for Queen Victoria by Prince Albert in 1852. It's not normally open to visitors at this time of year, however the grounds were opened on certain dates in November and December to pay respects to Queen Elizabeth II, who died peacefully here on the 8th of September 2022. After visiting the castle to pay our respects to the Queen, we wandered around the beautiful grounds filled with autumn colours and enjoyed the peace and tranquility of this special place. After a royal cup of Earl Grey tea and a flapjack, it was time to climb up to visit Prince Albert's Cairn, also known as Balmoral Pyramid, which was said to boast wonderful views over the castle and surrounding area. The walk passes historical cairns erected by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert to celebrate the marriages of their children and other key events in the royal family. There are a total of 11 cairns to discover within the Balmoral estate. Prince Albert's Cairn, this one here, is a steep walk into the woodland, but well worth the effort to see the incredible landmark as well as the panoramic views of the Cairngorms National Park. It was a wonderful and peaceful afternoon, but as the light was starting to fade around about 4pm with it being autumn, it was time to cross back over the River Dee and head to our accommodation for the evening in Ballata. We arrived at Glen Tanner National Nature Reserve the next morning, and the first sight was of a doe with her fawn heading away behind the trees. It was too dark to film as we had left before sunrise, wanting to make the most of the autumn daylight hours. There are a number of different trails which we explored, the first one starting right at the car park called the Juniper Path. From here we followed the River Tanner and into the classic Caledonian Pine Forest. It was so peaceful and tranquil, with hardly another soul in sight. Thank you. 
a nine mile walk, it was a quick 15 minute drive over to the next nature reserve, Muir of Dinant, which was quite different. The reason for visiting here was to explore Berno Vat, which is a vast bowl of pink granite scooped out by a river flowing underneath the glaciers that cover the land 20,000 years ago. For anyone visiting, I would highly recommend waterproof boots. After a wonderful four mile hike around the lock, it was time to call it a day. We had officially lost light and it wasn't so bad having to leave the trail knowing that the next day we were going to be attempting to climb up Kengo Mountain. After staying on low ground, waiting out the heaviest of the rain that morning, it was time to head up to Cairngorm, meaning blue or green hill in Gaelic. It's the sixth highest mountain in Britain with a height of 1,244 metres. It's said to be easier to climb than the highest mountain in the Cairngorms, which is Ben Macdui, standing at 1,309 metres. I was still recovering from a rib injury during this trip, so I decided to start on the easy climb, which I was glad of when we saw the weather forecast. We set off with the plan of let's see what happens. Backpack fully packed with the emergency shelter, micro spikes and all the usual emergency equipment just in case we could venture to the summit or even along to Ben Macdui. It quickly became clear it was far too windy. So instead of aiming for a summit via Windy Ridge, we decided to take a trail up towards, please forgive my Scottish pronunciation, I am trying my best, Corrent Nechte, the quarry of the snow, in the hope of seeing some lochans and sheltering a little from the direction of the wind. The landscape changed around us and it felt like we had the mountain to ourselves.
As we neared the Lockens, we had to admit defeat. Only minutes away from catching a glimpse of them, but the wind was violently throwing us to the ground and we knew it wasn't safe to continue another step towards any ridges. The gusts were exceeding 75 miles an hour. warm cafe at the ski lodge and I was disappointed when it came into sight even though the wind was terrible it was cold and it was such a challenge to stay upright I was grinning from ear to ear and loved every minute of it at least it's somewhere that I'm gonna have to return to to try and tackle on a better day day started with some sunrise photography. I will be sharing some of my images from this trip at the very end of the video so make sure you stay till the end. Also follow me on Instagram at Mary's Outdoor Adventures to see many more photographs from this trip and many others. It was a perfect start to the day photographing Loch Morlick with views of Cairngorm Mountain as a backdrop and of course, Derek making friends with a raft of ducks. After a couple of hours of walking around the woodlands and the loch, it was time to head to the reindeer centre for our hill trip to visit the reindeers. of around 150 are free roaming and have been since 1952 in the Cairngorms 
as the subarctic environment is perfect at the elevation of about 2,000 feet. We got to walk among them, feed them, photograph them and ask as many questions as we liked. It was an incredible experience and one that I will cherish for many years to come. One did take a little bit of a shine to Derek, so we nearly had an extra edition coming home in the car with us, but luckily at the last minute, she decided to stay with her herd. Trying to squeeze in as much as possible before the last of the light faded for the day, we left to visit another lock. We were so delighted the sun made its last appearance and set in the perfect position, illuminating the castle ruins in the middle of the lock. Within 10 minutes it had gone, but it was just enough time to capture the atmosphere perfectly. It was then time to say goodbye to the Cairngorms National Park. It's safe to say I absolutely loved every minute of it and I cannot wait to return to explore it even more. If you have enjoyed this video, I'm sure you will enjoy our Scotland road trip as well. So I will put the details on the screen and in the description box below. If you've liked it, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you want further content or want to support me further, join me over on Patreon and I will look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Goodbye!